Okay, so I've got a 2005 Nissan Maxima, and uh, the most questions that everybody has, okay, so I already installed a uh, shift kit on it, or I put a, a Rostra solenoids in it, and I'm still having an issue. I have uh, one here that we're going to adjust the uh, uh, SLT solenoid, and we're going to uh, use a pressure gauge. Uh, I preferably, uh, I'm going to use a pressure transducer, and what I have here, I have this uh, extra pan. This is off of a, uh, a Volvo, I believe it was a Volvo. It has the return cooler line on the top. But I have uh, some uh, holes drilled here for uh, to adjust in my solenoids. Uh, so let's say uh, this goes into your transmission. You have the SLT port here. Uh, you, you have the SLT solenoid that sits this way, like this. And you uh, drill a hole here so that I can get my Allen wrench through it and uh, you know, adjust it. And here we have our uh, 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 shift pressure control solenoid, which is the green one. Uh, this is actually the pressure control solenoid, the APC. And then on top you have the uh, TCC solenoid, which we're not going to bother to uh, adjust that one right now. All we're going to concentrate right now on adjusting is going to be the SLT solenoid. We're going to bring the pressure up to specs, and it should be minimum of five pounds at idle. Minimum five pounds of pressure at idle, and around seven, seven and a half. Actually, seven is perfect. After that, we go for a ride, and then uh, if we feel that we need uh, some more adjustment, and this stays at five, uh, above five, but below eight or below nine uh, in idle, uh, we don't bother with adjusting this one no more, and we adjust the uh, shift pressure control depending on. Uh, our shifts. Uh, they're too hard, too smooth, or flares, then we adjust uh, the shift pressure control solenoid. But first, the SLT, uh, EPC so uh, solenoid has to be uh, adjust first, and then we go from there. Let's go to the car. Okay, so here we are at the car, and as you see here, the, the shield here has been removed and the one on the bottom as well. This is your SLT port and uh, we're going to concentrate on uh, adjusting that solenoid there which is the pressure control solenoid and then afterwards we uh, adjust the SLS solenoid which is the shift uh, field uh, solenoid or the shift pressure control and that's the pressure control solenoid. And that's the pressure port, you attach your pressure gauge here and a minimum 5 pounds and we go from there. Now let's install our uh, test transmission. Okay, so here we see that we have uh, one pound of pressure. That's all we got right now. And here we are connected. We are connected there. And I already have the, uh, my Allen wrench here ready. Now we're gonna let this uh, transmission, I just put the fluid back on. We're gonna let it uh, a fast idle go down. And then we're going to uh, try to adjust this uh, SLT uh, solenoid. As you can see here, the, the, the transmission pan is already installed. And uh, you see the Allen wrench there. That's our pressure port. And we are doing our SLT uh, pressure uh, calibration, uh, minimum five pounds. Okay, so here we go. We, here we, go. Uh, we are at one pound and uh, one uh, click is equals to one pound so uh we're gonna go four clicks and uh, see if we can bring it up to five pounds okay that's one click that's two clicks that's three clicks that's four clicks and that is five clicks Let's look at our pressure. We are still at one pound for some reason. Uh, we were at three and it just uh, dropped to one pound. Let's go ahead and continue. One more click. And as we see here, we have no uh, pressure rise, no pressure rise at all. 
and we are at seven clicks eight clicks we probably have a defective solenoid here we have no codes for it but it can be a possibility that it could be defective let me go through the gears right quick and uh, we'll go back to the uh, transducer see what what's uh, what's going on with okay so I'm having an issue with my old Vantage and uh, I've just got my Vantage Pro uh, and my battery's dead so I think I'm gonna have to uh, hook up the uh, my Varus and I don't like to use my Varus for this thing because it's too big and my Vantage Pro it's, it's medium size but the battery was dead that's why I have my old Vantage and I think that that old Vantage is already tired and uh, there was a problem with the connection so uh, but before we continue we're gonna uh, just check it for codes and uh, just make sure we have no codes and we're gonna reset the throttle body because we want we want the uh, idle to be uh, uh, where it's supposed to be and reset uh, because the I the uh, line pressure at five pounds has to be at normal idle and if you uh, adjust the line pressure first and then your throttle body is gonna throw it off maybe by one or two pounds so we just want to make sure uh, that everything is right. Okay, we have no uh, no coats on the engine. Let's go ahead and uh, look at our transmission. Let me get a little closer here. So we are communicating with the transmission control module. This vehicle has two modules, engine control module and transmission control module. Let's go ahead and read codes. System pass, no fault codes detected. Okay, now we're going to exit here, and we're going to go back into the engine. Okay, let me let me just exit again. I think I think it went back to the uh, instead of a transmission, it went to the engine. Because every every time I uh, I select uh, engine or transmission, it it's highlighted in a different color. If you see here, kind of like purple. Okay, now it's identifying the transmission control module. Okay. Uh, Press OK. Now we are at the transmission control module. Let's go ahead and read codes. System pass, no fault codes. See when I exit here, see how it, it, it right here is black and it turned uh, purple and here's purple as well. And that's how I noticed that we didn't, we didn't, uh, heck, I guess I pressed the engine twice. Okay, so we're going to do the throttle reset. I have the uh, engine already up to uh, temperature and we are in park and I have our parking brake uh, applied and I just need to uh, make sure that I hold press and hold the brake while I'm doing this okay so we're gonna go to uh, work support and then we're gonna go to number four select number four idle air volume learn uh, let me escape again. Okay, tells you well, you know what the battery battery should be. But we're gonna go ahead and start everything. It's uh, all the accessories are off. Let me just shut the driver's door. That should be close as well. Let's go ahead and press start. It's establishing vehicle communications. Now here it just gives you uh, uh, idle, air, volume, learn. There is nothing selected here and we have a start button. Uh, let's go ahead and press start. Now adjusting. It's idling a little high. Parking brake should be on. Uh, the brake pedal should be depressed accessories off AC everything has to be off the door uh, driver door has to be closed as well so that the dome light will be on, won't be on it says complete we press OK now we escape and we see let's go see how where we're at we are at maybe 600 yeah about 600 that's about where you're supposed to be at operating temperature here we see the operating temperature and yes this uh, vehicle has 152,632 miles on it 
So now the next step is going to, going to be uh, adjusting our the SLT solenoid. Let's get back to it. Okay, so we got our lap skip connected and we are at 0.0, .0 pounds. I backed out of the uh, turns that he had yesterday. Uh, we're still at 0, 0 0.3. I'm going to see if it'll raise pressure. And I'm not seeing any pressure rise with this either. No, no pressure rise. No pressure rise on the gauge. Here we go. We just went too high. Let's back down 14 pounds. We probably have something stuck there. 11 pounds, 10 pounds, 9.7, 9.8, 8 8.4. We can bring it down to 7, that would be perfect. Okay, uh, it's not going any further down. We have like a dead spot. I'm going to put one click down. We are at 7.7. .7. One more click. Let's see where we're at. We're still at 7.8 pounds. And I went down one click. That's down another click. 8.4. 9 pounds. Down another click. 8 pounds. I don't know if you can see that, but 8.4 is the one in the center, the one that we're looking at. And I'm still going down. Uh, there's probably something wrong with this solenoid. 7.7, 7.6. Okay, the pressure's going down very fast. 4.3, that's too low. We are at 5 pounds. That's our minimum. I'm going to see if I can raise it 2 pounds. I'm gonna, that's one click. 4.7, it actually went down. Yeah, it has a dead spot here somewhere. And just pay attention to the eye when it goes up and down on its own. See, the idle went down, the pressure went down. If we can bring this to 5 pounds, let me go back where we were. It's dropping very, very low there. Yeah, it's not responding. We're probably going to need to replace this sort of light here. Okay, after a little while, and going back and forth with the, uh, with the adjustment, and uh, doing a lot of engagements, we are at 5 pounds. It's a little bit, it goes a little bit under when the idle goes down, but we are in between 5 and 6 pounds now. So uh, that's where we want it, and uh, all it needs is just be test driven, and it should be ready to go. So that's how you do it. Uh, you have to go. Uh, you, uh, actually, it's better if you do it in drive, and uh, bring it at five pounds in drive, and then go uh, from park to reverse, reverse to neutral, neutral to drive, uh, a bunch of times, and uh, look at your pressures and, and go from there. Uh, that's that's actually what I did, and. Uh, it's been satisfactory and to me this is ready to go drive. Okay, so yesterday we were checking the uh, pressures on this uh, 2005 Nissan uh, Maxima and uh, I was not quite satisfied because the pressure did not stay stable and the vehicle was already at operating temperature. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I decided to pull the valve body out and as you can see here, I mean, they've already uh, uh, done a shift kit to it. Uh, and sometimes uh, before we put, uh, we before we replace this solenoids, they are available from uh, Rostra. 
uh, uh, through your transmission, uh, local transmission parts supplier. Uh, they're about a little bit over 200 bucks for the set, almost 300 uh, for all three. Uh, so they are available, but before we do that, I just want to make sure that uh, the shift kit was installed completely and not just the solenoids. I see here, yeah, that's the one that comes in the shift kit. Uh, and here we see two. Uh, one is for the torque converter, the other one is the solenoid regulator. Uh, what I'm noticing here, it looks like no valve body gaskets. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, tear this thing apart. We're just going to have a, a sneak peek here. I do have a, a, a two more videos on this. I have a, a video uh, installing the uh, Transgo shift kit. And I have a, the part two of the video. It's the re reassembly of the valve body. So uh, if you want to get uh, in-depth uh, instructions on the valve, on the shift kit installation, transfer shift kit installation, you can go to my other video. Here we're just going to do a sneak peek of what's going on here and uh, I'm going to reassemble it together and then we're going to go back to the car. We're going to touch our, attach our pressure uh, uh, hose and our transducer. And probably what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, I'm, I'll, I'll probably just use a regular pressure gauge, uh, low pressure gauge, since we're dealing with low pressure, and we want to get this thing stable at five pounds. And we, if we cannot accomplish this, uh, I am going to go ahead and get uh, Rostra solenoids for it. But we are going to uh, stop at that point. If uh, at the end of the video, if if we uh, uh, accomplish what we were looking for. With this original setup, uh, I mean, I'll let you know then, or uh, if I need to get roster solenoids, uh, we're going to end it there. I'll get the solenoids and I'll install them, but I'm, I'm not going to film that. So uh, for now, I'm just going to, we're just going to take a sneak peek here. So we got our three uh, linear solenoids, the SLT, SLS, and SLU solenoid off the valve body. Now we're going to take our uh, little on-off solenoids and just set them to the side and the way I do it I just, li I, I just like to uh, keep it simple and uh, the way they're coming out is the way they are laid out on the valve body and you see the way I, I set them up on my, uh, on my shop towel here that's the way you want to set them up you don't want to mix them up, you don't want to create headings, you just want to grab them and install them back on that's what I do, keep it simple little bit organized for you guys. I'm just making it easier for you whenever you, you come back and uh, try to assemble not to be uh, guessing where they uh, where they belong. The linear solar solenoids is no big deal. I mean uh, they only go in one way. All right well let's see here. I don't know what I did to my magnet but here we go. Alright, let's pick this thing up. Here are the accumulator checks and yeah, you can see here that it doesn't have valve body gaskets. One reason this thing may not have valve body gaskets is because the valve body gaskets do not come in the shift kit and uh, some transmission parts suppliers, they don't want to sell you the valve body gaskets on their own. They want to sell you the whole overhaul kit which is almost 200 bucks. And, uh, but there are some places that do sell you just the uh, valve body gaskets, like for $30, somewhere around there. Uh, and whenever you do a shift kit, the shift kit is about $100 and about $30 more for the, uh, for the valve body gaskets. Are you talking somewhere around, somewhere around $150. Or if you still want to put valve body gaskets on it and, uh, your supplier doesn't want to sell you valve body gasket, then you have to spend uh, the overhaul kit, uh, which and then uh, it's better for you just to purchase the solenoids, which is almost the same price as getting the overhaul kit just for the valve body gasket plus the shift kit. I mean, it comes out about the same price. So we were having an issue with uh, forward engagement, 
And uh, this is a, a forward control valve, and it flows good. So I'm assuming here that the problem that we were having, uh, we were having uncontrolled pressure. We could not control it uh, completely. Uh, we were trying to adjust the solenoid, and all of a sudden it went all the way to uh, from 4 pounds to 14 pounds, and then it went down to 10 pounds, as you saw on the, on the, on the scope. Uh, and if you see here, we have some, uh, this, this valve body is a vented valve body. We have uh, two uh, accumulators here. And the valve body gaskets, actually on this accumulator here, it does have uh, an exhaust uh, cutout for it to uh, exhaust, exhaust, exhaust some fluid here. But if you see the cutout here, it, it may not affect it. But on the worm tracks, the valve body gaskets have holes. Uh, I'll go ahead and get some valve body gaskets and uh, install valve body gaskets in this valve body. Probably they're missing on the opposite end as well. Let's go ahead and flip it over and uh, get the little filters out of the way. Get the accumulator checks out of the way. Here we go, we got one more here. Okay, let's flip it over. Now when you flip it over, this uh, uh, clip here, it'll fall off. And if it does fall off and you don't pay attention, uh, this uh, it has a little capsule, a check ball in there. And this is a, a reverse shuttle and if this falls off this little cap is going to come out and you, you're going to have no reverse trust me it happened to me once and all you got to do is just pay attention to it i'm going to get a little bit of assembly lube so i'm going to put assembly lube in this little hole where the where the clip goes where the retainer goes it retains that uh for it not to fall out. Now I'm going to go ahead and reinstall it. And that's going to hold it in place. I'll put a little bit more of assembly loop here. So just pay attention. This is very common. I mean, sometimes uh, I do get a lot of calls sometimes because I cannot answer all of them. I'm sorry, guys. You know, uh, I got to take care of my business here. You know, I got to build all these transmissions. I do. I, I actually build transmissions all day long. Uh, and some of you guys send me text messages and text messages are better because uh, whenever I get time, I mean, I can respond to your text messages. But yeah, I mean, I receive a lot of calls on no reverse sometimes. Sometimes it's just uh, the seals that go in between the valve body and uh, the case, which uh, these two ports right here, you have two seals in the case. One is for uh, uh, rear lubrication and the other one is for low reverse. So if the one for low reverse is missing, you're, gonna, you're not going to have any reverse. And it is very common when you remove this valve body from the transmission that the seals fall off into the case. And they're not available separate either. So uh, if, you, you, if you get into that situation, you can just get an O-ring that will match the, the inner pocket on the case. And that should work perfect for you guys. All right, let's go ahead and flip this thing over and uh, disassemble the opposite end. I'm going to go ahead and take this ball because it goes all the way through the other side. Okay, now we have it upside down. Let's go ahead and take these bolts out. Put it with the others. There we go. No valve body gaskets. Alright, well, I'm assuming and I hope that installing valve body gaskets here is going to take care of our uh, uncontrollable line pressure. I say, I say uncontrollable because we could not control it. We have real beautiful forward engagement sometimes. Seamless, that's what you need to have, seamless forward engagement. Reverse was beautiful, was never an issue. It was just forward engagement and uh, 
If we get this thing working properly, we can see actually the waveform when, when the forward engagement is in three steps and it goes all the way to 70 pounds sometimes. And this was not even getting to 50 pounds on the forward engagement. But there we have it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this thing back together, get some valve body gaskets, and we'll put it back on the car and, uh, and see what happens. Okay, so I already got uh, valve body gaskets and a small parts bag for the valve body. We got the accumulator checks, we got the little filters, we got the solenoid O-rings. And uh, I'm going to use my screwdriver, I got it, the torque set at 15. Uh, instead of, uh, I disassembled it with the impact range. I'm going to use that screwdriver, and uh, the reason I'm going to do, I'm going to do that, I'm not, I'm not going to torque it with you guys. I'm just going to assemble it, uh, make it quicker. So uh, we open up the accumulator check, and uh, it has one uh, check ball in there too. Go ahead and empty all the contents there on the shop towel. Let's open up our valve body gaskets and see what comes in it. So first and foremost, this uh, plate here has bonded plate, uh, bond, bonded gaskets. So we're not going to bother and replace that. It's bonded to the plate. That's the way it is, and that's the way we're going to leave it. Now on uh, this plate here, there's two types of uh, valve bodies, and there's two types of plates. Here is one gasket that is non-vented. If you see here in this corner, it doesn't have a hole and it doesn't have that camel hump. And here, on the other hand, we can see the hole and we can see the camel hump, right? So this is a vented a valve body gasket. This is a non-vented valve body gasket. So the non-vented valve body gasket, we're going to put it to the side. We're going to look for the other matching uh, vented valve body gasket. Now, this gaskets also come in the, in the kit which is the ones for the bonded plate. We're not going to use them this time for this uh, video. Here's the one on the other side. Now we're looking for the other vented. Here's the other vented. See this camel hump here and the hole. So we got both vented uh, valve body gaskets for this vented valve body, which you see here has got the hole and it's got the camel hump. Okay, uh, with that being said, let's uh, begin with this thing. Let's get rid of the non-vented, the other non-vented, where is it at? Okay, it's right here, non-vented. Let's put it to the side. We got our two vented valve body gaskets. We have the two little gaskets for the little plate on the, uh, for this portion of the valve body. So we are gonna use this, we have this is actually over there on the vehicle, on the drain pan. Uh, but this is a little cover with two bolts. Uh, this is a, a cooler flow, where the cooler flows. Here we have uh, this uh, gasket. This is for uh, this side of the, for that plate, where you have uh, the primary and secondary uh, uh, regulator valves with the uh, accumulator. And on the other side, we have this other little gasket that goes here, which that valve comes in the shift kit, and that's the one that we want to replace. Uh, I forget if this is uh, this is the. I think that's the solenoid regulator valve. My brain just sometimes uh, farts a little bit. Sometimes I forget the names of it. I'm human, just like you guys. I forget things sometimes. Okay. I'm not going to disassemble this other part here. I mean, there is no need for that. Well, there is actually a need for that. Let's go ahead and check it out. Just make sure that everything's there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get my socket, put it on my impact here right quick. Now that we're here, I mean, we just want to make sure that everything is there. There's nothing underneath here, so we'll put that to the side. 
Let's go ahead and uh, lift this plate up. And here we should have one check ball and four accumulators. Set this over here to this side. As you see here, we have one check ball and four accumulators. And then we have uh, some pressure relief valves here, or accumulator valves, you want, you want to call them that. Uh, one has a soft spring, one has a stiffer spring. Okay, so uh, since we have our accumulators new, let's go ahead and uh, just take these guys out and put some new ones on it. Now this valve body has been cleaned. I mean, you can see that it's nice and clean and the fluid is cherry red. I don't see any, uh, any reason why we, sh we should put this on the solvent. Now if, it, if the fluid was very bad, uh, I have another video on a teardown of one of these units and the fluid was, it looked like uh, black gold or petroleum, if you want to call it that. It was, the fluid was actually black. Okay, so we get these accumulators out of the way. Let's take this check ball out of the way. It's a blue little check ball. Put it right here to the side. We're going to get the small parts kit. Comes with two check balls, just in case you lose one. This is the location of the check ball. And we're going to go ahead and put four accumulator checks. We're going to get four new ones. I was not going to film that, but I decided, okay, I'll go ahead and do it. Might as well. We're already here. So, here we are. Don't forget to click that uh, red uh, button right there that you see on the left hand of your screen where it says uh, subscribe here. You want to do that now if you, if you can. I encourage everybody to subscribe and that'll keep you informed whenever I get more videos out uh, you will get notified and uh, so you can see or you can watch our new videos okay so now we put this back on here now I'm going to use two guide pins here that I use just to just to kind of center it center the plate Put one here and one here on this end. Now we're going to go ahead and kind of drain this thing a little bit. Okay, and we install this thing. Let's go get our three bolts here, the two short ones. There's one here, the long one goes here. And then the other short one goes here. Okay, now let's switch to our screwdriver here. And we just want to get it closed whenever we go to the other side. There's a bolt that goes through, so we want to align that. Now let's go ahead and install, uh, since we're already on this side of the valve body, let's go ahead and install our uh, gaskets on this little plate here. And if you see here uh, how different the, the gaskets are, the one with the big hole goes towards the, the uh, portion of the valve body, and that's to clear uh, to clear that accumulator there and we want to replace our accumulator checks here as well go ahead and pop them out I hope that this video is not too long for you guys but it's kind of a if you want to learn then you watch the whole thing and I don't mind sharing all my uh, little, little bitty knowledge that God gave me to share with you guys so, uh, and as always, uh, all your comments are greatly appreciated. And I, I thank you guys for all your positive comments and the negative comments. I uh, thank you as well. And any other uh, issues, if I miss some something, and you are a uh, transmission technician as well. 
just post it on the comments and uh, you want to add something to it go ahead and add it to it uh, your comments are greatly appreciated like I say if I miss something and you know about it and if you want to share it this is the time to do it like I say I share what I know with you guys and some some of you guys are probably better than me which I know that for sure and whatever you know if you want to share it let's share it with the uh, young technicians that want to uh, that are interested in the transmission industry we don't want to tighten up this yet we want to put that ball that's on the rear okay let's go ahead and uh, install this bolt Now we can tighten up. Let's get this accumulator checks out of the way. Now we tighten up these. And this is a screwdriver you can uh, uh, play with your torque settings. It doesn't tighten up uh, that much. I mean, you can take them off by hand right away you sure you sure don't want to strip them up strip them away okay so now we go ahead and put our filters here our new filters so the big one goes on the opposite uh, side of the valve body we got one here one here one here you got four of them one here so we put four check bolts on the other one, and we put two accumulator checks, uh, four accumulator checks, I'm sorry, and we're going to put two accumulator checks here and four filters here. Let's go ahead and put this other accumulator check. So there we have uh, this portion of the valve body uh, almost complete. Now let's go ahead and install our uh, valve body gaskets to this plate. And we're going to go here and go ahead and replace this accumulator check as well. Now that we add it. And we're always on the small parts bag, we always have one accumulator check and one check ball uh, extra. So then you're going to have one accumulator check left over and one check ball left over. If you have two check balls or two accumulator checks, then you know that you're missing one. On the valve body, you want to go ahead and uh, retrace your steps, uh, step back, and uh, see what you've missed. So, as you can see here, we have one accumulator check and one check ball. That's all we got left, and that's, what, that's all you should have left. So, here on our valve body gaskets, we have a large hole and a small hole, and of course, the large hole is going to go towards your uh, pressure relief there. So it's over here to our uh, uh, vented pressure release ports and it's going to go around this uh, pressure relief there and now we get our other valve body gasket here and uh, we go ahead and uh, install it we have another filter here And now we go ahead and install it on our rail body. I'm going to get the two shorter bolts. Let's go ahead and uh, get this thing on here like this. We have one bolt that goes here. Short bolt and short bolt. We don't want to send them home yet. We don't tie them up until we get all of them, then we get our guides through it. So we just want to make sure that all our bolts are 
uh, partially there. We got one more. There we go. Now we get our guide pins as well again. And this is a little tricky because uh, mine are not long enough. I'm going to put them there. Now we send them home. Okay. And I would recommend for you guys to uh, torque them. 40 to uh, 54 inch pounds. Now let's go ahead and uh, change that uh, gasket for that plate. That's going to be a 10 millimeter socket. Okay, so this is our old gasket. It looked like it was missing a piece, but it's, it was still on there. We got this gasket out. We actually put the new one in, but we're going to set it over here on the valve body. That way uh, it doesn't interfere with this valve here. And this is kind of a little tricky because you have a couple springs there that's going to have a little bit of tension against you. So we just go ahead and uh, kind of thread this one with the plate raised up as it is and then we have that valve too that we want to make sure that it goes in the way it protrudes out like that we want to make sure that we get that thing in first into the bore before we start putting some pressure on it let me take this thing out and uh, there we go we have a little bit of pressure on it Go ahead and get our plate and just hold it in place there. There we go. Go ahead and do the opposite end here. Another one on the other corner. Okay, so we got them almost there. Go ahead and put the rest of them in there. Slowly and carefully, we're all the way down. Go ahead and send them home. So there we have that plate. Now we're going to do this other little plate. It does have the new valve in it. The old valve, it's aluminum, and the new one, it's uh, it's metal, it's steel. And I hope they don't have the wrong valve body on it. Uh, this one is a spring-loaded valve, and uh, I, think, I believe 04 is the one that is free-floating. It doesn't have a spring. This one does have a spring, so I think I think it's, a, it's the right valve body for this unit. This is a 05, and 04 only. Uh, the code is a 8Y000, and on the maximum 05 is 8Y100. Okay, so there we have it. Now we uh, go ahead and mount our solenoids. Let's go ahead and change these oil rings. I think they've been replaced. I'm not sure. Probably not. If you didn't have no valve body gasket, it probably doesn't have a. These oil rings probably are not new. So let's go ahead and uh, change them. Okay, so we want. 
to change all five of them. I'm using a little pick, a 45 pick. Let's change our socket here, eight millimeters. So those are some uh, things that you kind of need to look at. Uh, just pay attention to uh, how everything is disassembled and how you're putting things back together. I'm just giving you, these are just some tips of uh, what you can do in your situation. Like I say, if uh, some of you guys probably do uh, a lot of these transmissions all day long. I mean, there's some some uh, some of you guys that uh, work in reman. Uh, uh, let me take this up. Like in a reman company, and sometimes the reman companies they put one individual to build just a certain unit. So if you're one of those guys and you know a lot about this unit, you want to post your comments down here in the bottom, you're more than welcome. We all want to hear from you. Just like you're learning from me, um, I'm, I learn from you guys as well. We got one more O-ring here. We have no more O-rings left over. Go ahead and go back in with this. Change. Well, actually, let's go ahead and put our uh, SLU solenoid. Install it. Just find the bracket. Right it's over here. Okay, so the blue one is the SLT solenoid. That's the one we were adjusting through the through one of the holes in the in the pan. Let's go ahead and uh, and this is the uh, SLS or uh, shift pressure control solenoid that controls your shift field. How the shift field on the upshifts and the downshifts. So once you once you have your uh, line pressure set up where they're supposed to be, so you know that your line pressure is good, but you still have uh, some issues with the shifting, uh, then you adjust this uh, solenoid right here. As you can see here, this cover, you adjust the uh, one solenoid through here, which is the SLT, that's what we were doing. And then you have the SLS hole here, and then you have the SLU here. This is just a pan that I had that I just uh, drilled those holes, and that allowed me not to be removing the original pan, taking it off, putting it back on, you know, to adjust it. And then you put it back on, you take it off, you put it on, you take it off. It's better just to install a test pan like that. You know, you, uh, you have uh, some access to it, you adjust your solenoids, first you adjust your line pressure, and then your uh, shift pressure control solenoid. Sometimes all you need is just adjust the line pressure, and that's all you have to do. Alright, so there we have it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and install this back on the car, and uh, once we get back on the car, I'll install our gauge, and uh, we, uh, we'll see the results. Okay, so here we are at the car. And uh, see those two seals there? Those are the ones that I was talking to you about. One is for low reverse and the other one is for lubrication. If one of those two happens to fall off and uh, you don't notice if the low reverse uh, falls off, you're just going to have no reverse or slipping in reverse. But if the other one falls off lubrication, uh, severe damage to the unit can occur. 
because uh, uh, you're not going to have any lubrication or all the lubrication is going to leak out of there and you're going to have lack of lube on your heart parts and uh, you're going to have a catastrophe there uh, unit burn up not the clutches but the planets hard parts are going to be severely damaged so just pay attention there guys that whenever you go back in with your valve body just make sure that those two seals are there where they're supposed to go if one of them falls off then you can uh, in those two little pockets just get an o-ring that will fit the pocket and uh, then reinstall your valve body you can uh, hold them in place with vaseline if you don't have uh, assembly lube Vaseline is petroleum jelly and assembly lube. That's what it is petroleum jelly. So you can uh, use that as well Okay, so that's our pressure port right there. We are plugged in and uh, We just need to uh, for the fast idle to come down and we are at 13 pounds and I thought it was a false false connection here with my vantage, but it was actually the valve body gaskets as you see here uh, I'm reading 13 pounds of pressure. Now I can start to adjust this solenoids and uh, see what we're going to end up with. Okay, so that's our pressure port. And that's our pressure. We are at 13 pounds. Idle is coming down. As you see here. There it is. Uh, 2005 Nissan Maxima 3.5 V6 AW5551SN. Uh, I'll let the idle uh, bring it up to uh, operating temperature and then uh, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, start adjusting that solenoid. Okay, so we have a P0171 code, uh, fuel system to lean bank one. Now, uh, this is going to affect uh, our throttle body calibration. And as you can see here, uh, we are at two pounds. Let me see if I can get two pounds on my uh, old Vantage and whenever you have low pounds like that what's going to happen is going to give you a hard uh, forward engagement see that he gave like a double bump but then once the pressure stabilizes see like we are at 12 pounds right now or 11 pounds is dropping if it's above five pounds you have a beautiful seamless forward engagement Right there, you didn't feel nothing. There was nothing going on. Uh, very beautiful forward engagement. But when you leave it running for a long time, uh, see, reverse, we never had an issue. It is very beautiful. We can probably just go one click, and uh, whenever it goes below, I'm going to leave it stable at idle, stay, uh, uh, steady at idle to see uh, where we're going to end up at. And it was at two pounds, so I can go two clicks. I'll probably just uh, get one click. If I go too far, then you're going to have a very quick forward engagement, but it's going to be very hard as well, and you don't want that. So right now, since I'm at eight, if I put it in forward, in drive, uh, it, you're going to have a seamless engagement, very beautiful engagement. Uh, that's what you want, but you want to let it idle, see how the pressure is dropping down. And uh, that's just a, a worn out uh, solenoid valve. Uh, the valve, the, the, not, not, not where the pintle goes, but the valve itself, you know, they do get tired and, uh, and they wear out. So uh, I'm gonna do my best to adjust it perfectly, as perfect as I can, and uh, to see if it's gonna be deliverable. But this is how you do it. I'm gonna let it sit there until it drops below five pounds. And then I'm, uh, I'm gonna maybe uh, increase it for one click up. Increase it, one click. Okay guys, well uh, this concludes our video on uh, how to adjust the SLT pressure control solenoid or SLT solenoid or pressure control solenoid on an, on an AW5550 or AW5551 SN. Uh, the tools that we needed were uh, an Allen wrench and this is a whole solenoid that I got and you need an Allen wrench to turn the adjuster uh, sometimes you will install a shift kit like this AW5550 and you find that uh, it's still giving you some issues some, uh, some issues up shifting, down shifting uh, slips, flares, uh, hard up shifts, hard down shifts uh, after you re uh, install the shift kit like this 
or when you get uh, rostral solenoids, you have the same issue as well. Uh, you have extremely line pressure. They're kind of uh, adjusted a little bit high when they uh, assemble those solenoids. Uh, so uh, to correct that, I mean, you can use a, a Vantage, old Vantage like this. You just go to power user test, uh, transducer tests, and uh, transmission line pressure test, and uh, it'll take you to the to the screen, you know, where you would see uh, your line pressure. So I used the pressure transducer, and uh, this is the port, uh, channel three on my old Vantage. But uh, you can also use it on uh, like a Varus, or you have a Vantage Pro as well. So for the Vantage Pro and the Varus, you need this uh, Y adapter here, and actually you can plug in two uh, transducers here uh, on the Varus, as you see there. You just go to uh, your uh, scope and multimeter. Uh, you go to a uh, lab scope, and I just go to a uh, 500 pressure transducer, and you want to choose uh, 100 pounds uh, or below. Uh, well, 100 pounds is the lowest, and then you have the 20. And the reason you want to do that is uh, because uh, you're working in low pressure, five pounds is the minimum, and it would go up to 70 some pounds sometimes on engagement or when you're driving it. So uh, you just go to your scope and then you just do your normal setups. I'm gonna go ahead and exit back from here. Uh, you can also use, I have this set that uh, is from Mac Tools. Uh, you have the regular uh, 400 pound trans, I mean, uh, uh, pressure gauge. And uh, as you can see here, I'm just missing the glass. I mean, I used the hell out of this thing. But for, uh, for this particular unit, you would need a low pressure. Uh, it, it just goes up to 80 pounds, and sometimes it go it, it, depending on the on the driving condition. If you have this connected, it'll go almost uh, to 70 or 80 pounds. So you got to kind of be careful with this one. But it is more accurate. And uh, what you want, you want to be right below 10 uh, and above 5. If it's below 5, it'll give you a double bump in forward and uh, or double engagement and kind of hard going in. If you go like 15 pounds, uh, you're going to have very quick uh, forward engagement, uh, but it is going to be a little bit firm, too firm for the customer. You cannot deliver it like that. But I found that in between 7 and 10 pounds, or maybe 11, uh, 11 is kind of good, you know, it's not too firm, and uh, it gives you nice and quick, uh, quick shift, uh, forward engagement. So, uh, with that being said, this is my transducer, uh, snap-on transducer. It just connects here, and I just rigged this uh, a quick connect so that I can just uh, quickly connect it to my hose. And this is the other end that goes on onto your transmission. Okay, so there you have it. I mean, you can just use a regular uh, pressure gauge, five pounds minimum. Below five pounds, you're gonna have some issues. Above 15 pounds, I believe you're gonna have some issues as well. So you have that small window. Uh, you have to reset your throttle body. Like this one here, I showed you that we have a P0171 a System 2 Lean Bank 1 code, and that will cause an issue once that code is fixed. Once you fix the unmetered air that is going into the engine, uh, the idle is gonna drop a little lower and your pressure will drop a little lower. But I'm not concerned about that. Uh, I mean, I left it right at 10 pounds. So if the idle goes a little lower, uh, whenever they fix the P0171 code, uh, I still have a margin and it will not fall under five pounds. Okay, well with that being said, uh, don't remember, click that red button, subscribe and uh, click like if you like it. I hope this video was not too long and uh, just share it in your uh, uh, social networks or whatever you wanna do with this video. Uh, so thanks for watching. My name is Hiram, and uh, I'm glad I've helped you, and uh, just spread out, spread out the word. Thanks for watching.